we're spraying aphids. <laughs> spraying aphids today guys I wish we didn't have to but the soybean aphids are here uh, they've gotten pretty thick I'm down to about less than 300 gallons of water left in here now dad's on his way down with the truck we're gonna load this thing up again and uh, dad's gonna take it and then I'm gonna jump across the road to the south here with one of the uh, technical agronomists from channel we're gonna walk around look at some of the corn and soybeans and see what we can see these beans are not too bad uh, this, this is not the tallest ones out here. They're fairly tall, but it's not the tallest. This was old hay ground last year. The soybeans look pretty good right there. There you can see my climate field view working. And I'm about empty. It's about time to fill up. Then we'll go walk around in some of those fields and see what we can find. Okay, I'm out here with Bruce Magnuson, who is our technical agronomist for Channel in the area. He's going to fill in for my seedsman, Scott, who is actually busy right now setting up for his customer appreciation deal that Bruce and I are going to go to tonight. He's actually getting the Bellamy brothers out to one of his farms, so that's going to be a good time. But we're standing here in some Channel uh, soybeans. These are 1405s. That's the variety we've got here. Uh, they've got nice height. I, Bruce, what do you think of these things? Yeah, so they're filling in real nice. The uh, rows are filling in the last uh, week, 10 days. Main issues we're probably talking about in this field they're look for because of the season. Uh, aphids are a concern, obviously. White mold development in uh, certain areas of the field is something to look for. General weed control, you know, how, how do we do for the season? Uh, you look across the canopy here and, you know, things are pretty clean, so I don't think weed control is an issue. You guys just saw me in the sprayer a little bit and we loaded that up. Dad took that thing, he's out spraying on the other side of the field, so we know we've got some aphids here. Yep. So we'll maybe go ahead and pull some of those up and see what we're looking at, show you guys what we're talking about with those things. Picked a clean one. I picked a clean one, yeah. I think I better go over a row or two. There's a few dead ones on there. Yep. They die off. What is their lifespan? Well, they're, they're born pregnant, you got to remember that, so that's kind of a scary deal, right? Yep. That's, you should never trust anything that's born pregnant. <laughs> There we go. There. Oh yeah, look, look at, at that. Look at here on the top. All these little green critters here. Those are all soybean aphids. Yeah. You know, and so the, the uh, economic threshold counts are 250 per plant. You know, kind of kind of depends on the moisture uh, uh, in the field. We have adequate moisture here, so yield potential is high. But then again, the plant's full of moisture, ample moisture, and that's what the, uh, the pest does is he actually reduces the uh, moisture content in the plant. Certainly if we got a high yield of potential, uh, the impact could be quite substantial. So you want to get out here and control them. Hopefully it's one shot and you know, you're know you done with it, hopefully. Yep. Uh, because we get to the 20th of August or so in this part of the country and they basically say no benefit. The other thing we want to talk about a little bit about here today is, is white mold. Uh, it is an area where there's an abundance of white mold. Zach, I think you said you have Necessarily, haven't necessarily had that experience with white mold. We've got a lot of neighbors that have problems with white mold or have had problems. It's definitely, like you said, it's in the area. Yep. Uh, but we're on 30 inch rows and we plant at a little bit less population than what a lot of guys do. And we just haven't had big issues with it. Um, we were talking before, we've got some spots, but when it comes to overall big issues with white mold, we just don't have it. And right. that's a big part of the reason we've stayed on 30 inch rows and yep. kind of worked our population down a little yep. bit, actually. We do see a tendency for uh, populations to be reduced just as a management tactic for white mold. And, and uh, we continue to see more and more re research that says we can drop our populations back on soybean. Looking for white mold, where you'd want to start is areas off to our right over here. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a depression in the field. You see the uh, the tile inlet, open tile inlet there. Yep. Certainly is a, is an area where 
uh, will probably remain cooler later in the morning. Uh, if there's a bit of a fog or a dew, uh, that's where it's going to settle in, which is all supporting environment for the white mold. And so that's a really nice, or cool area to uh, utilize your field view app. Yep. So yep. You, once you go out there and scout, you see it, maybe even in the fall when you're combining, you say, hey, look, there's uh, white mold here. You can drop a permanent pin and identify that in, in uh, two years from now when you come back to plant beans. And you know that you, you may want to do something different around there. Maybe you want to, you know, uh, vary your rate, drop it back substantially in there, knowing also that you'll have to come in there and uh, put an application of fungicide on uh, to control the white mold. Soaks were all the way out to the end. Uh, we're shed, shedding pollen in the morning, typically. Yeah. There's not a whole lot being shed now, um, but uh, we majority of the field, I'm sure, is probably done pollinating. We've got brown silk setting us here a little bit on a few ears. Yep. Uh, but then so you think it's already done pollinating here before? Time. Yep. So the silks will start to dry out now, and things will start filling out. Exactly. What I'd like to do is get some uh, corn rootworm sticky traps out here. Okay. Just to monitor. Yep. It's kind of a nice practice monitor. See if you've got a population out here to think about for the next corn crop that you bring in. Uh, you know, do, do you want to add additional uh, rootworm control like a smart stack or something along that line? This is 20128. It's a double pro, so it doesn't have rootworm protection. It's a big hybrid. It's a tall hybrid. Yeah. Well, I'm to the tip of my fingers is eight feet, so we're looking at nine to ten feet on yeah. a lot of this corn. Yeah. Actually, as I look at it, you know, if you look at this plant and you see a lot of anthers shedding pollen there. Uh, this one looks like it's about d all done shedding. Yeah, you can see where things have been shedding down here. Everything. Right. right. Yeah. We don't have much for pollination challenges in Minnesota. It just doesn't get hot enough. It doesn't get hot enough. So Bruce took off. I'm back out here in the sprayer again now. We refilled it after Dad got done with his tank, and now it's my turn again. We were uh, Bruce and I were hoping to go look at a field of uh, extend soybeans and kind of see what the weed control has been like on that, but um, it's a little bit too far away. I couldn't get that far away from the sprayer. As far as what we're spraying here on the aphids, I wish we were spraying a bifenthrin product or a generic warrior, as we would call it. Unfortunately, that seemed a little bit uh, ineffective last year. Pretty much everybody has switched over to a generic Lorsban or a uh, chlor chlor chlorpyr chlorpyrifos uh, product. And we don't like spraying with it. It's a little bit more dangerous, I guess I would call it. I hate using that word, but uh, the fact is, is that it is a little bit more dangerous than the bifenthrin product. I wish we didn't have to spray for bugs because there are beneficials out there that we're killing and I certainly don't want to kill those. I wish I wish we didn't have to spend the money and time to do this, but the fact is that we do. I had a lot of people tell me last year, try not spraying, you'd be surprised. Well, I had a neighbor who did that. Uh, not a neighbor that lives close to me, but a field that's right in our immediate area. Any neighbors watching probably know the field and basically the aphids took over. They all moved into that field and just pretty much wiped it out. If we don't kill these bugs, it's crazy how much they take over. So we've got to be out here, unfortunately, and I wish we didn't have to be, but the only chemical that's nearly as dangerous as this that we work with is gasoline and diesel. I'm back out here with Bruce from Channel, and we're checking out some of our Extend soybeans. These are a new bean last year, I believe. Yep. This is a, a 1318 bean from Channel. Yep. Why don't you go ahead and tell the guys a little bit about the new Extend beans. Okay, so the new Extend beans, obviously we continue to improve on the characteristic fit for the geographies. Today I think we're we are in a very good spot with that. But we're standing in a field that probably doesn't have a whole lot of IDC, so we're not going to see those issues here. 1318s are a very good performance bean. Uh, what we see in testing, they're very similar in performance to the 1405s that we've sold uh, sure. for a number of years. So. Really common bean in our area. Yeah, like you said you've used the uh, extend a herbicide system on these beans as well. Yep, authority first for the pre-emerge right. probably an hour after we planted. Right, and then somewhere around that 19th, 20th of June you went out to here and yep. put, put the uh, Roundup and the uh, the Extendamax on. Yep, right? 
Yep, right. the night the twentieth of June's our cutoff here in the state. Right. So we made sure we got out here by then. The fields were still pretty clean at that time. Okay. Uh, but having right. that cutoff and wanting to get that extend down, we came out here those last couple of days and made sure we got that sprayed. Exactly. Thirteen, eighteen soybeans uh, from a fit characteristic wise, we're in good shape with the uh, with the phyto. Uh, the white mold uh, tolerance is above average, uh, and the IDC is it's doing pretty well in those environments too. Looking out here as an agronomist, what do you see as far as weed control? Does the weed control look good here? Boy, we uh, we stumbled across a little bit of nuts edge on the way in. Yep. Um, you know that, that that's probably a little bit different program. Roundup does an okay job on it, uh, but not the best. Yep. So and so. never has. Right. Yeah. yeah it's Absolutely. not a it's not something that's gained tolerance no. recently. It's Correct. always had that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I don't see any uh, leaf diseases developing, anything of that nature. Um, you know, we looked at some lower leaves that are kind of turning brown, and you know that that's a good share of that's probably from shading. You know, some of these um, there's some spotting develop in there. You know, we certainly could have some frog eye uh, starting down here in the lower canopy. Uh, but uh, not to a major extent at this point in time. This most likely will get some fungicide. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's a generic quadrus that we typically sure. put down that we've seen kind of mixed results with. We've seen some really good results with it and we think we've seen almost no results. Because you're looking at, you know, what's the future? We're yep. looking at a, a two-week forecast. Right? Yeah, because you can't walk into the field and say it's got this or that, now we spray it because mm -hmm. you, you've already, right. the damage is done, correct? Correct. Fungicides are a bit like insurance, right? Yeah. So you don't know whether when that storm is coming. Right. And that disease triangle I just talked about, that's the storm we're referring to. So we don't know, necessarily know when that storm is coming. There's The pathogens are always, pre always present. Right. That's what we've learned over the years is okay. they're here. Yeah. It's just a matter of is the environment and, and the host. Sudden death is, is one that we hear I hear about a lot, yep. but we've never experienced it, and I don't really personally know any neighbors that have. You okay. know, it, you hear about it on the ads, the go. farming ads, but I, I don't see it, I, so I don't even know yeah. what it looks like because we've never been concerned with it. Like you say, our concerns are that frog eye a little bit, yeah. and, and white mold is really is the big one. Yeah, and white mold, that's a totally different fungicide chemistry uh, yep. if you're, if you're going to try to address, address the, uh, the white mold. So the, the future here in this field looks like Probably spray the aphids when the timing's right, and yep. then as well on the fungicides. We got the whole month of August to make beans. Right. August makes beans. And we got yep. heat and moisture, and uh, could could stack up to be an awfully good soybean year. 75, 80 bushels? Boy, wouldn't that be nice, huh? In the poor spots, yeah. yeah. That'd yeah. be nice. <laughs> <laughs> you see anything in the roots that catches your eye? Good, bad, uh, or Very good uh, nitrogen nodule development here. We didn't dig them, so it's hard uh, in order to find cyst nematode. You'd have to dig the root. They'll strip off. Okay. Yeah. Pod sets really good on, and, and even on the branches. So we're making beans. It's like you say, we right. just need that heat. Right. That's what really makes beans around here. Well, there you go. You heard it from Bruce. This is probably going to average close to about 100 bushels to the acre. Stay tuned to find out in a couple of months. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Chlorpyrifos? Chlor... Chlorpyrifos.